according to reports, as part of a required change to take advantage of expanding market prospects at home, Chinese chipmakers are giving orders from local clients priority while refusing orders from international clients, according to sources, certain major industry players. Like Huahong Group, cancelled international orders to give preference to domestic firms owing to the scarcity of global chip supply, media sources claim that semiconductor manufacturing international company, SMIC, a major Chinese chip manufacturer, has similarly adopted a strategy of mostly accepting orders from domestic clients, the Huahong Group could not be reached for comment as of the time of publication. And the Global Times contacted someone in SMIC's news department on Tuesday who said he is not aware of the matter, representatives from the sector have taken notice of the apparent trend. The agency has observed the new trend, is taking it seriously, and is looking into the situation, according to a source from the industry organization, who confirmed this to the Global Times on Tuesday. Because he was not allowed to address the situation, the source declined to provide further information. The worldwide semiconductor chip deficit has worsened since the start of this year as a result of a number of causes, including the revival of the car sector and the spread of 5G technology, according to experts. Businesses frequently have to choose which orders to complete when there is inadequate capacity for worldwide wafer manufacture, according to Luffy Lin, chief analyst at Wit Display, an electronics device consulting platform. Channeling limited production capacity to meet the demand of domestic buyers may cause some loss of interest among foreign clients in the short term, but in the long run, it can support local chip manufacturers and lead to long-term, stable orders. Lin noted that offering the capacity to local chip designers will help them develop swiftly against a growing tendency of domestic substitution. If domestic chip makers supply capacity to foreign clients, they may not necessarily acquire appropriate orders when there are no shortages in the future, localization will become the long-term development trend of the semiconductor industry both in China and abroad due to the strengthening of external restrictions. Particularly those from the US, a volatile international economic and trade situation, and global pandemic disruptions, according to insiders in the sector, new orders cannot be met for at least seven to eight weeks. According to the market director of a major chip manufacturer situated in Jiangsu province, East China, who spoke to the Global Times on Tuesday. Given the persistent demand, this situation is unlikely to improve very soon. Although the corporation won't always prefer domestic customers, it will give priority to orders from customers with whom it has long-term, strategic connections, and domestic customers account for the majority of these customers. We will concentrate more on creating domestic partnerships for dependable, sustainable growth, said Wang, noting that there are more chances and a need for using indigenous wafer replacements, according to Wang, Local enterprises currently make up 60 to 70 percent of the clientele. According to data from IC Insight, China's integrated circuit IC, industry reached $143.4 billion in 2020, accounting for 36.24 percent of the world market, while local ICs made up less than 20 percent. The greatest consumer of semiconductors worldwide is China, however Chiu Kai, a researcher at Huashang Fund, said that there is a significant opportunity for the localization of the chip industry due to the vast gap between local IC production capability and semiconductor supply. A new warning has been issued for chip businesses to improve their capacity for risk prevention and management while pursuing excessive development by Tsinghua Unigroup, a prominent provider of digital infrastructure and services as well as a chip manufacturer. The opening price of Tsinghua Unigroup's shares was down more than 3%, or 21.9 yuan before Monday's closing price was up by the daily limit of 25.31 yuan, although the financial problem put the firm in the news over the weekend. The corporation said in a recent statement that the event hasn't adversely harmed the company's day-to-day -day production or operation and that everything is now going according to plan, according to Liang Jinping, an industry observer. The company's blind expansion is anticipated to have this result since it is not strong in the semiconductor sector from research and development to design and manufacturing. Liang also pointed out that the high cost and potential for great profitability make it difficult to purchase production lines in the semiconductor industry. As a result, Liang remarked, Unigroup cannot be trusted to purchase. And such expansion through acquisition needs to be cautious in the sector. As a result of Tsinghua Unigroup's apparent insolvency and inability to repay debts, the chip manufacturer got notification from the Beijing No. One Intermediate People's Court on Friday that its creditor Huaisheng Bank had filed for bankruptcy reorganization of the business, Guixin Micro, 
a subsidiary of Tsinghua Unigroup that is also active in the semiconductor industry. Released a statement on Friday evening stating that a group reorganization will affect the composition of its investment structure as of the time of publication, Tsinghua Unigroup could not be reached for comment, however. Guixin Micro stated on its interactive platform on Monday afternoon that there has been no direct impact on the company's regular production and operation operations as a result of the creditor's application for restructuring of Tsinghua Unigroup. But because the group firm hasn't yet released its 2020 annual report or audit report, many are left wondering just how bad the organization's debt issues actually are. Tsinghua Unigroup's 2019 annual report shows that as of the end of the year, it had liabilities totaling 218. 74 billion yuan in assets totaling 297.76 billion yuan, $43.22 billion, China Securities Journal said, without going into specifics, that Tsinghua Unigroup is facing a lot of domestic and foreign bond defaults in light of its own statement on June 30. According to sources in the industry, Tsinghua Unigroup has a lengthy history of debt issues related to its excessively quick development at Tsinghua Unigroup, which was established in 1988 is the parent company of multiple listed businesses. Through acquisitions like Spreadtrum and H3C in recent years, the business has further strengthened its capabilities in semiconductor design and development as well as digital infrastructure. The largest publicized international acquisition for the company at the time was Linksons Group, a French chipmaker, which Tsinghua Unigroup also purchased in April 2019 for 2.2 billion euros, 2.61 billion dollars. The group firm also tried to buy MediaTek and Taiwan Semiconductor International Manufacturing, two major players in the sector, but none of those transactions were successful. Point 2019 saw a number of significant mergers and acquisitions, which apparently caused unusual changes in Tsinghua Unigroup's foreign debt. According to media sources, the firm quickly produced an emergency statement claiming that there had been no default event either domestically or internationally and that it had adequate cash and stable fund liquidity in the semiconductor sector, where long-term capital investments are required. Acquisitions are costly and frequently do not produce a return on investment in the short term, increasing the danger of default, according to experts, although there have been similar incidents in the semiconductor business before. Analysts claimed that what occurred to Tsinghua Unigroup is not an uncommon occurrence. Companies must develop and become powerful in order to survive in an industry where global competition is so tough, and the U.S. blockade, Majiwa, a veteran of the sector, told the Global Times on Monday. MA observed that taking a risk is frequently the only way out for semiconductor businesses, according to analysts. Tsinghua Unigroup's debt issue won't have a significant negative impact on either the business or the industry since the semiconductor sector is still a desirable location for social capital and because the company has room to develop. Ma would still counsel businesses to conduct a thorough risk analysis before to making acquisitions or expanding their operations. Domestic semiconductor businesses that specialize in artificial intelligence AI, are among the first to experience significant gains as investment floods into the cash-burning chip sector amid China's all-out attempts to become independent and fight the U.S. threat. Many of them have quickly created and released goods that can compete with HiSilicon, a semiconductor subsidiary authorized by Huawei. New chip releases would be the main event of the WAIC 2021 conference, which was scheduled to start on Thursday in Shanghai. The mid-range and lower-end chips these chipmakers are developing will largely satisfy future demand for chips with both AI features and Internet of Things IoT, functions, according to experts, and will pave the way for China's rise as a major chip manufacturing base. Even though they may still be at least a decade behind the most advanced technology, Shin Bo, chief technology officer of Artisan Microelectronics told the Global Times on Wednesday that the chip the company is delivering this time can effectively compete with high-end goods from HiSilicon, the AR9341, a new generation of AI camera chips from the Shanghai-based chipmaker, was unveiled on Wednesday. This chip will mostly be utilized in second-generation ultra-high-definition smart cameras. It has achieved three to five times the processing capacity of HiSilicon-related products at a cheaper price. Completely satisfying the requirements of HiSilicon's previous high-end clients, Shin said, Shin continued by saying that several comparable Chinese chipmakers are working to fill the order gap created by HiSilicon's US ban, the second version of Deep Thinking Unit, DTU. Developed by Chinese semiconductor firm Inflame to analyze enormous volumes of data for AI system training, was introduced on Wednesday, 
The first cloud AI inference chip from Vastai Technologies, Shanghai, Inc. was introduced on Wednesday. Its top performance is 200 TOPS, INT8. Additionally, as part of China's drive towards self sufficiency, several large technology businesses, including ByteDance, Pingtuge, Alibaba's chip subsidiary, and Tencent, have declared a fresh push into creating semiconductors. With a market share of more than 80%, foreign firms like NVIDIA continue to rule the Chinese market for AI chips. A representative from a local AI chip design business told the Global Times on Wednesday that domestic firms are, nevertheless, rapidly catching up. Once they have produced their own chips, industrial heavyweights with existing market dominance in smart gadgets or other items may employ those right away in place of imported ones, the source claimed dot state-owned businesses, commonly referred to as the national team, are also making an attempt, but mostly in the more cash-intensive chip manufacturing industry. A distinct work division exists. The central government primarily focuses on the localization of essential machinery and materials in the manufacturing process, such as the construction of its own wafer factories, while private companies place more emphasis on design and expert in the tech sector who is based in Beijing, Majiwa, told the Global Times on Wednesday. In the field of chip fabrication, Ma said. Breakthroughs can only be achieved through effort, regardless of cost, according to Ma. China will be able to independently make 7 nanometer chips in around 2 to 3 years, at which point it may overtake all other chip producers in the low to mid-priced semiconductor market, according to media sources, the largest chip manufacturer in China, Semiconductor Manufacturing International Corp, SMIC said on Wednesday that it will increase its current manufacturing capacity of 45,000 8-inch and 10,000 12-inch wafers to accommodate additional client demand. The production of crucial 28 nanometers chips has allegedly been increased by SMIC since last year, which will be very important in the process of building a more comprehensive domestic semiconductor industry chain in China and reduce the need to rely on foreign foundries, according to official figures. China pulled all the stops in May to make chips despite a serious worldwide semiconductor shortage, increasing its output by 37.6% from a year earlier to 29.9 billion units, a record for a single month. Thank you for watching today's video. We will be much appreciating if you subscribe our channel and give us a thumb.